In this demo, we will show sample workflows from the notional organization Task Force Phoenix, who have recently transitioned to IBM EIA. This demo will demonstrate how EIA can replicate the key functionalities of your current analytic platform. If you have seen i2 in the past, you will notice that there have been vast improvements in the user interface. It is now ribbon-based, cleaner, and more modern, with fewer clicks required to perform key functions, which in turn also means increased efficiency. Also, you'll notice that the sequence of ribbons mimics the analyst's progression from import, through analysis, to publication. In Task Force Phoenix's old analytic platform, analysts could use a number of tools to search the shared repository for relevant data. We can do the same thing using i2's intelligence portal to search our shared repository. Through the portal, we can use the browse feature to bring up a list type view of the data so the user can view details without adding the data to their workspace. You will see details of the item on the right. We can also build a visual search query to search the shared repository for an object of interest and bring it to our workspace for further analysis. The visual search query allows the user to easily create complicated SQL queries by simply dragging and dropping items into a sample chart space. These can be fairly simple or can be quite complex with detailed requirements. As an example, we can draw a search for all people who have links to both a security organization and a militant organization. In this case, we will search for military regions linked to a military base. Notice that we have this query saved. This search will return a military region in Yemen. We can add these items to our chart to explore what order of battle information is in our shared database. Right now, we have a military region object linked to a military base. This is the structure returned from our visual query. If we want to expand our chart looking for specific types of linked items, we can use the filtered expand tool. This menu lets us choose exactly which types of objects we want to return if they are linked to our selection. This targeted search helps avoid overwhelming search results. Let's choose populated and infrastructure locations as well as positions. In this case, we searched for specific types of locations and for positions in order to return the commanders of the military region. The filtered expand returned three command positions and an additional location. If we want to see everything, similar to exploration searches in other platforms, we can expand from this item and populate our chart with other linked items from our shared repository of vetted information. I can do this by clicking expand instead of filtered expand. After expanding a few times, I have the number of degrees out I want to search for this investigation. Within a few clicks, we have a network showing the direct and indirect connections for our starting objects. Task Force Phoenix's legacy platform offered a number of useful layouts for analysis. i2 also has layout tools to arrange our data in a way that gives better insight into the meaning behind the results of our search. I will choose a hierarchical network with the military region at the top. Now we can examine the data and see the different leaders and the component units of the military region. In your current analytic platform, you probably have a way to view details of an item. In I2, we can double click on an object to manage its type or view its attributes. The attributes are customizable and searchable, allowing great flexibility and easy adaptation. Attributes can be hidden or displayed on the chart, depending on whether the analyst is emphasizing a streamlined view for presentation or showing the attributes during analysis. i2 offers a number of useful symbols, including the doctrinal symbols shown. You can also easily add your own. We have shown one way to start a chart with data we already have. 
we can also add new unstructured information from external sources. There are automated tools for ingesting data from unstructured text, i.e. entity extraction, which can be included in your solution, as well as manual options, which we will be demonstrating today. Using TextChart, we can import a document by highlighting a word we want to create an entity for and dragging it onto the type of entity we want to create. Let's make Iraqi Security Forces a security organization and attacked a kinetic engagement. Once we have created two entities, we can link them by highlighting the text again and dragging it onto the object we wish to link to. We can create an attribute in the same way. In this case, we will give the kinetic engagement a ground engagement type of complex. Because I2 is so modular, if you have a different entity extraction solution you prefer, it is easy to implement. We have looked at one type of network commonly found in Task Force Phoenix's workflows, the order of battle chart. But we can also look at a series of events to see some different functionality, including some timeline tools. Here we see a number of attacks linked to an offensive in Helmand province. The attacks are set to be ordered by date, so that each one cannot be moved out of chronological order. The time bar has markers showing exactly when events occurred and when two events happened at the same time or date. This setting can be turned off to allow for different types of analysis if, for example, you want to only look at how entities are connected rather than the sequence of events. In order to get a clearer picture of these events, we can use the conditional formatting tool, which formats objects based on sets of rules. The conditional formatting tool allows for multiple specific rules, which can be saved and distributed across a team. Conditional formatting has strong application in both analysis and presentation workflows. For example, if we run a saved rule that changes the color of all objects with an air engagement attribute, we can easily see which of the events included air engagements. We will also see that most of these are linked to the Afghan National Air Force. Because our events are organized in chronological order, we can read the chart from left to right and get a sense for the order of events. With the conditional formatting, we can see that the air engagements mostly took place earlier in the offensive, giving way to Taliban-initiated ground attacks later on. We can run a second rule that will change the color of ineffective engagements. i2's filter and histogram tool combines several features from Task Force Phoenix's legacy platform while adding a new ability to compare attributes with a heat matrix to drill down even further and gain greater insight. When we open filters and histograms, we can click on an attribute and see a breakdown of how many objects have each of the values associated with that attribute. As you would expect, selecting any of these values selects the corresponding objects on our chart. Depending on our settings, the other objects can either be hidden or grayed out. The new capability i2 provides is the heat matrix. For example, we can open date as a histogram and layer casualty figures over that in a heat matrix to see how this attribute changed over time. i2 can also build a heat matrix on other non-date time attributes such as attack type and casualties. Here we see several high casualty attacks early in the offensive. Attacks later in the offensive never reach the same number of casualties. The heat matrix makes this pattern available with only a few clicks. Task Force Phoenix has been able to migrate to IBM's analytic solution while preserving all of their unique analytic workflows and procedures.